Special meeting of council. Uh, I'd uh, like to recognize that Ms. Sheila Gurry will be our clerk this morning. I'd like to call this meeting to order and recognize, of course, that we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Zanamic First Nation. The question period sign up sheet is on the partition wall near the gallery. And if during the meeting anyone meeting in the gallery has a question regarding an agenda item, writing please write down their name, the agenda item, name on the agenda item. And I'll call you up at the start of the question at the end of the council meeting. At the end of the council meeting to address the council. The first item on the agenda is the introduction of related items. Ms. Curry, I don't believe that. Thank you, Your Worship. 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 Thank you, Your Worship.
which uh, is creating a certain level of chaos and endangering the health of many citizens as people attempt to crowd into uh, stores as opposed to public facilities. And I would encourage everyone to take a breath, step back, and accept what we have been told by uh, leading retailers and by uh, senior government, that the supply chain for the products that we need to live and survive are secure, and it is important to exercise the kind of restraint that is appropriate. Going out multiple times to multiple stores just increases the likelihood of uh, contact with someone who may have the virus and would encourage its spread unnecessarily. It would be nice to think that people can go to the store of their choice, purchase what they need and leave and go home as opposed to approaching multiple uh, enterprises to, in order to secure the goods and services that they think they need. So I'm asking people again to exercise restraint and common sense and be sensible. On our page, um, which does give credible information. Uh, the site will include, starting today, questions and answers, of some of the questions we've been receiving uh, from the public, either at the mayor and council level or to our switchboards. Uh, I give you an example. If businesses are not enforcing the order from the provincial medical health officer, what is the city going to do? The city does not have the authority to enforce provincial orders. The province is responsible for enforcing these orders and will lay fines and penalties for a breach of their order should they choose, choose to do so. And I have no doubt that as this crisis worsens, and assuming it does, uh, they will act accordingly. So I'm asking everyone to exercise the kind of calm restraint that is appropriate in the face of a crisis, but it is a crisis that we will exacerbate unnecessarily if we don't behave accordingly. Um, I have a question and answer sheet with many more examples, but that will go up on the website. Uh, I see no reason to take further time this morning to go through it. I want to thank, again, before I turn this over to Mr. Rudolph, the work of staff uh, who have been extremely busy in the last few days, top to bottom in the city of Nanaimo, uh, ensuring that we are doing everything we can to stop the spread of this virus and to protect public health and safety. And I want to pay my compliments again on behalf of the citizens to everyone who's participated. Uh, I'd now ask Mr. Rudolph, our Chief Administrative Officer, to provide an update from an operational standpoint. Mr. Rudolph. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a couple of key points to mention in addition to your comments. So from an operational point of view, as you've indicated, uh, our Emergency Operations Centre has been activated uh, since last week and it's at a level two now, which means we're, we're uh, basically uh, engaged in that uh, in a full virtual model all the time and uh, in, in that centre almost all the time that we're not uh, necessitated to do other things. So, uh, you know, so we do have our uh, all hands on deck. Uh, the premise that we're working on is maintaining service levels to the to the best we can. I've not seen any significant deviations from that. We, we need to create an environment for staff to deliver those services. So the social distancing uh, aspect of the requirements from uh, the chief medical officer, especially since the, uh, they declared a, a health emergency this week, uh, is uh, necessitating that we are taking actions to uh, provide that environment for staff to do that at home, uh, at work, as well as uh, creating opportunities uh, for working at home. So uh, the one thing I wanted to uh, mention then this morning is that we are now moving to another level of closure with respect to our public facilities and that the uh, city is uh, open for business, but our facilities will ha be uh, closing their front doors uh, effective noon hour today. That's March 18th at uh, 12 o'clock. Um, so this is uh, in addition to our recreational facilities that were closed on Monday. We are moving to close additional uh, city facilities such as the Sark building, uh, the public works counter and city hall effective noon hour today. Uh, we are, uh, to be honest, the volume of traffic at City Hall over the last day or so has been extremely limited. Uh, all avenues for uh, 
uh, virtual business are open and will continue through the telephones and uh, all, all aspects of opportunities to conduct our city hall business are continuing. So we're not closing our city hall, we're just uh, taking that additional precaution to create that environment at city hall so those workers can come to work in a, a contained environment. And uh, so that is uh, our, our uh, most important uh, item to identify today. Um, we are moving to our online platforms full on um, and our key features such as our development services department who are, have a lot of clients and uh, works in the progress will continue to be uh, uh, dealing with those clients through uh, other methods and we think that we can achieve uh, most of those and uh, other our core services uh, police fire water uh, sanitation are all continuing as uh, has been the case and uh, we we're hoping to maintain those service levels and uh, all the secondary and ancillary issues that uh, we have we will uh, continue to provide those services but in a different framework so we're not being asked by a lot of people to uh, have face-to-face -face meetings to be honest and uh, out of respect yeah, it's very hard to have that social distancing uh, premise of one to two meters over a counter uh, effectively, so uh, that would be uh, th the main points I'd like to make today. Thank you very much, Mr. Rudolph. And, and before I, I move on to the next item on the agenda, I, I want to emphasize again to the citizens of this city uh, that this is the time to step up and be a good neighbor uh, and to assist those who are not in a position uh, to assist themselves or be as active. Uh, as they would normally be for various reasons, or the health or age or any other disability, uh, as the case may be. Uh, and I want to uh, thank those citizens who have stepped forward. I want to commend in particular the, uh, the Nanaimo Beacon uh, for sponsoring the program it has that has led a number of people to uh, take on uh, caring for another individual and providing the services that are necessary to keep them safe and, and healthy. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful example of what I believe this community is all about. Uh, and uh, I, nothing less than I would have expected in the circumstances. Uh, the next item is Guri uh, presentations. We have none. We have no consent items and no delegations. Uh, we're on to reports. It's the 2019 budget carry forwards. Ms. Legan, please. Thank you, Your Worship. I'd like to uh, provide finance and audit uh, committee information at the council meeting here with a summary of the 2019 budget carry forward. Some key points to consider is that at the end of each year where a project has not been completed or where it was delayed or not started, budgets are carried forward to the following year. Much of those um, budgets are reserves and they carry forward. Um, almost 90% this year is from reserves. 88% of the projects are already started or almost substantially complete. So it's a minimal amount of projects that are not yet started and uh, they will be taken, um, will be underway over the next several months and will continue to move things forward, particularly those that involve planning. Unspent project budgets funded from general revenue contribute to operating surplus, which is our next agenda item, and unspent project budgets funded from reserves are returned to the reserves to fund future projects. The carry forwards are down year over year from 2018 quite substantively. They're down from 44 million to 33 million. Um, so we've gone from almost 48% lost in 2018 to just 33% in 2019. Attachment A has the funding source for all of those projects and it's really important to understand that the use of reserves and priority planning is an excellent method for the city to address significant demands and the large number of projects. Public Works alone has 244 projects underway that are almost complete. And so that number of projects, it's difficult to do on a business um, case by business case basis. So having the reserves and having management determine the priority of the projects allows for the best use uh, and next best use of the financial capacity of the city. Thank you very much. Any <clears throat> Councillor Hammonds. Thank you. Through you to Ms. Legan. From 48% to 33 this year, is that a good marker? 
that we're not, like, is there a range that we're aiming for, or is it? The trend has been, um, from 2016, we were at 43%, 2017 at 37%, 2018 at 48%, and 2019 at 33 And so I would suggest that it's a good marker and that we're trending in the right direction. There's uncontrollable um, circumstances which require us to carry forward. So, for example, with uh, fire rescue hall number one, we're carrying forward what we budgeted because we're not starting it on the exact date that we anticipated. A uh, lot of projects, you want to be optimistic, and uh, we budget for when we think they'll start. So the carry forward, the money is secured, and it's carry forward to the next year, so it's available. Councillor Armstrong. I just wanted to say, because there are some questions about a carryover of 86000 to the uh, Front Street project, that's a carryover. It's not a new added budget item, as people have been commenting. Anything further for Ms. Legan? Thank you very much. The next, uh, Ms. Mercer. So uh, I was... Present it, Ms. Legan. Yes, I will, I will present. I was supposed to be traveling this week, um, but I am not. And uh, <laughs> I know, giving Laura a little bit of a, a break, we prepared the presentation together so either one of us could present. I will be presenting on uh, the surplus allocation and the recommendation from management to city. I have a presentation to walk you through. I think uh, the reserve policy was established to stabilize future funding sources and minimize impacts. We are um, in a year where we're, um, the framework is in place and we're applying it. Three, uh, Ms. Lagan, for a minute. Uh, if, can we get it up on the... <laughs> I know you can make it happen, though. <laughs> Can't be watching sports as an alternative on there right now. So <laughs> we're stuck with my presentation. <laughs> yes, a good point. Very good. Thank you very much. So I am just on slide two. So effectively, the reserve policy is really preserving future capacity to keep needed infrastructure up to move strategic capital projects forward without random allocations at the expense of prudent asset stewardship. So I think it's very key to understand this reserve policy is both uh, prudent and strategic. There are three major funds uh, that we um, manage the financial affairs for the city under, one being the sewer fund. There is a surplus of 581000 which through statutory reserve top-up will be allocated to the sewer fund. The water fund, uh, just over a million dollars. Um, this is a um, surplus which will be allocated to that reserve fund. And then the general fund, which is going to be the majority of our discussion, uh, has some option for allocation. We do need the allocation decision so that we can close our financial statements and the auditors can complete their work. What are the major drivers? Uh, I'm going to go fairly quickly through these of these um, surpluses. User fees were higher for sewer and we had some unspent funding due to timing differences of debt requirements and that enabled the $581,000 to be put into the sewer reserves for future major projects. The water fund, we had user fees and connection fees related to water use higher than what we budgeted for, and then some unspent uh, contingencies. So $1,069,989 will be put into the water reserve um, to top it up. This is the one I want to spend some time on. What were the major drivers behind the surplus in the general fund? You can see that vacant positions throughout the city contributed about $2 million. We're seeing that uh, gap closing. Interest income, uh, this might be um, a thing of the past moving forward in our current um, Fed rate reduction environment. The interest income was a million, uh, 116,000, 100 higher than what was budgeted. Our building permits were up um, significantly, higher than what we had anticipated in our budget. 
uh, the parks, recreation, culture, fees, and admissions, higher use of all our facilities, grants in lieu and penalties, and interest on taxes. Contracted services uh, were less than expected. Our hardware, software, and license for our IT or digital infrastructure at the city was less than ex expected. Janitorial supplies less, insurance less. The conference centre, uh, more than we budgeted because we did pay the incentive fees which were contractual and earned um, by VICC in 2019. And then we are um, accruing for the liability with the settlement of the RCMP contract at a point in time. So some of the uh, pressures and opportunities that we um, have identified is an upgrade to the audiovisual in the Vancouver Island Conference Centre. Uh, we have an analog system in place which is not serving conventions and clients of the space appropriately and we have some upside if we can upgrade that equipment. The, um, Sark building originally was intended to be structured and configured for growth. This would be the last phase to accommodate the changes in the growth. And then um, the sponsorship project to determine the asset valuation for future revenues for the city is one of the projects that uh, is a pressure. The general financial stability reserve is statutory. We are required to top this up. It's currently sitting at $16.4 million. We'd up it by 759000 It's mostly due to post-employment benefits liability um, going forward, which we get actuarial assessments on and um, other accountants in the system um, ask, uh, let us know what we need to top it up um, for, so this is not for debate. We have also um, put aside $200,000 from a previous motion for our strategic partnership reserve and I'm going to recommend in a few moments that we keep this intact, uh, whether it goes to any specific initiative, um, we have the ability to use it for where we think highest and best use will be con in concert with the original intent, which is to um, provide partnership opportunities with Sinemic First Nation around joint projects. So whether um, what's anticipated in the future events and others go forward or not, this reserve would give us the capacity to provide partnership opportunities for whatever is required. This one, the General Capital Reserve, this would be uh, when uh, a couple weeks ago when we put this together would have been where we recommend um, 2.9 million dollars of the general surplus go. I'm going to recommend that that actually be put into the um, strategic, or pardon me, the special initiatives reserve. So combining this 2.013 million dollars and the 2.955 million dollars into the Special Initiatives Reserve will actually give Council, Mayor and Council, the most opportunity for flexibility and highest and best use of these funds moving forward. We do need to make a decision for auditors to uh, close our financial statements, for us to close them so that they can audit our closed financial statements. And this is uh, the recommendation in consultation with um, Mr. Rudolph and uh, the balance of our finance team as well. So moving forward, I believe we can take, oh, let me just go through. So uh, this was the option that we had put in place. The only difference to the recommendation is to combine the first two, Special Initiatives Reserve, General Capital Reserve, all into Special Initiatives Reserve. So that would move up to Special Initiatives Reserve. And that was the original next steps, which have shifted. Ms. Lagan, thank you very much. Councillor Armstrong? Um, thank you. Totally agree with the recommendations, especially with uh, the circumstances we're finding ourselves in now. And I would go so far as to say is that we don't even make any recommendations today on any spending until we see what the next few months bring us. Thank you. Councillor Gesselbrock. Uh, thank you, Yad, and I just wanted to say, uh, just echoing what Councillor Armstrong uh, said, um, I support uh, the recommendation number one. I think that's prudent to put that money into a more flexible fund, just given that there's going to be a few unknowns uh, coming down the pipes here in the next uh, few months. Thanks.
Councillor Brown. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, uh, totally in agreement about maintaining maximum flexibility as we move forward. And not a question, but again, I just want to state how thankful I am about the uh, establishment of um, the new reserve policy and, and the guidance of staff bringing that forward because we often receive a lot of criticism around reserves, but um, with, uh, with respect to the general financial stability reserve, you can really start to see how it is a useful item to have um, for that, those rainy days, which undoubtedly we are experiencing now. So uh, very much thank you. <clears throat> Nothing further? Move the recommendation, Councillor Armstrong. And, and just Secretary. for clarification, we're moving the amended recommendation. Yeah, thank you. Seconded, Councillor Gesselbrock. Any discussion? All those in favor? With thanks, Ms. Leggan. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the uh, interim uh, business property tax relief program. Ms. Leggan, your thank morning. You. <laughs> thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I will present on the Interim Business Property Tax Relief Program as um, envisioned by the province. Um, we are recommending that Council delay consideration. Delay consideration. I'm not saying delay implementation. I'm actually saying delay consideration on implementing the Interim Business Property Tax Relief Program to at least 2021 pending further investigation. The program would allow municipalities to temporarily give small business, nonprofits, arts and culture organizations relief from property taxes, while the province suggests that they'll continue to work on a local, um, more permanent, um, a, with, work with local governments and key stakeholders on a more permanent solution. Municipalities are given the flexibility to choose to what extent and how they would uh, implement. Uh, it is very temporary, it is very arbitrary, which creates a lot of complexity uh, for us at the city with a very, very short time frame to implement. It's also a tax redistribution program. It is not a tax relief for the city of Nanaimo. It is a tax redistribution program. There's certainly not enough time uh, to analyze. Uh, it's difficult to undo any changes when you implement something like this. It's uh, possible we could have unintended consequences and we really think that the concept is a very valid concept. It needs more time for appropriate investigation. We would certainly continue to work with the province to come up with a permanent solution, uh, but we feel strongly that it would be very difficult to recommend, uh, to implement on a, um, with a degree of confidence that we're doing it right. So we are recommending that Council delay consideration on implementing the interim business property tax relief. I do have a list of other municipalities who have recommended same uh, to their councils. I have a list of 10 um, that have, and uh, I'm happy to read it out, but just so you know that there are 10, large and small, who have recommended same. And we're not aware of any municipalities who have actually moved forward on this program. Thank you very much, Ms. Legan. Councillor Martman. Thank you. Through you, uh, is the Chamber aware of this type of uh, tax relief coming down the pipe, or have we had any feedback from the Chamber? Your Worship, they would be aware because it was public, uh, publicly announced in a press release. It was uh, initially soft launched um, in advance of the public release in January, and then I think it was February 24th that it was... Yeah. So, yeah, February 24th, it was released to the public. So they would be aware. I'm personally not aware of uh, direct contact with the Chamber. I'm not sure if Jake has received any or perhaps Laura Mercer. Not sure. No? Laura says Rudolph. no. Rudolph, I was in contact with the, the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce on Monday related to the pandemic. This, this, this topic didn't come up, so uh, it's really not okay. top of mind for them. It was more dealing with the, the, having a, a line of communication with the Chamber Okay, thank you. I was going to say that essentially what's really being given to us is some, an extra tool for our toolbox, but no, uh, no monetary benefit uh, 
from the right. province for this. It just allows us some more flexibility to play with tax rates uh, within our community and favor some and disfavor others. And uh, I think it's a wise recommendation, not that I'm playing opening my hands on this, of course. Councillor Armstrong. Thank you. I um, totally agree with the recommendation. Would like to move it at this time. Seconded, Councillor Gesselbrock. Councillor Gesselbrock, did you want to say something? Thank you. Yeah, no, I just uh, I support the recommendation. I know uh, this uh, wasn't the solution that UBCM was uh, was hoping for, um, so I think that it's wise to hold back from from moving it forward. Um, I just had a quick question, uh, just to help clarify my understanding of what uh, the, uh, the exemption is. The is the school tax uh, based on what the um, what the the assessment is with the increased value and then and then they get exempted but that's still spread out over everybody else to make up the difference your worship uh, yes uh, the exemption flows through to school taxes municipalities would be required to raise the same amount of school tax revenue as would have been raised without the exemption by adjusting school tax rates um, if it was put in place for the class five and class six so really there's no financial relief there either, and we would have to assess it the same, um, as though we had that same tax base. Uh, and I think just to build on that, that's, it is quite unfair to other businesses that the yeah. burden gets placed on, on their shoulders. So, thanks. Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Worship. Um, I also found this you know, a bit weird when it was came out. I didn't quite even understand the, the benefits to it. We, uh, as a municipality, already give a huge amount of uh, tax uh, relief to not-for-profits through our permissive tax exemptions. Um, so that's really not an issue. Um, and to me, it looks like this, this redistribution of tax is basically on lots that are the use is not in line with the zoning. Um, that's what I'm, I'm sort of understanding with it, so that the potential use of the land could be like a high rise and there's only one story on it uh, as, as one of the examples in here. I think the better um, look at from our point of view would be to um, narrow the distance between residential tax and, and business taxes. Uh, right now it's, it's about six times as much, three to six times as much. And I would think that we'd be better off looking at that difference as opposed to implementing this one. That's my opinion, thanks. Thank you. Seeing no further speakers, all those in favor of the recommendation? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Ms. Legan again, the Tire Stewardship BC Community Grant Program and CALS Replay Fund. Absolutely. I'm going to take a minute on this. Um, I think it's important for Council to know that uh, staff are actively applying for all applicable grants and uh, we don't have the um, grant approved. We want to make you aware that we have applied for it and would offset budgeted expenses for um, the specific application or the specific uh, use of the grant. In this case, we've applied for three grants totaling $82,555,000 from both Tire Stewardship BC Community Grant Program and Cal's Replay Fund. These grants are for rubber recycled tire resurfacing of accessible playgrounds. Uh, the two projects that we applied for the funding for uh, are the Maffeo Sutton Park Inclusive Playground Phase 1 and Harewood Centennial Park Accessible Inclusive Playground Upgrade. There is a um, environmental impact using recycled rubber and they are actually recycled tires from British Columbia uh, in this case that uh, are used for the upgrading. Thank you very much. Council have any questions? It's for information only. It's a good news item. We like those. Thank you. Uh, the next is the BC Active Transportation Infrastructure Grants Program. Again, Ms. Legan. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. There are three grants totaling $827,866 from uh, the BC Active Transportation Infrastructure Grant Program. Uh, the grant program provides financial assistance for community projects that focus on infrastructure that supports safe, human-powered modes of active transportation for daily commuting to school, recreation, work socializing, and errands. These projects uh, were approved by Council and are uh, the projects that we 
applied for uh, the grants for were approved by council in the uh, financial plans from 19 to 23 and 2020 to 2024. Any money received from these grants will offset and reduce the funding for the Metro Drive Complete Street Corridor and Utility Upgrade Project, Front Street Cycle Track, and the Casper's Way Multi-Use use Path. Councillor Hammonds. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I notice each of our departments seems to go after our grants that are applicable to their projects, which makes sense. And I'm wondering from a kind of philosophical standpoint, is there any um, advantage to having a, co a grants coordinator, a position within the city that manages all of this? Or are you satisfied with each department applying for and accessing grants as they come? That is such a great idea, idea and already implemented by uh, Ms. Mercer. and. Uh, um, don't know if you want to speak to it. Thank you. you go. They're amazing. <laughs> Ms. Mercer. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we do have in the finance department, um, in the financial planning department, we have a position that their job is to look at all grant streams. It's not a full the grant. Um, grant coordinator isn't the only job they have, but it's part of one of the financial analyst's jobs. So they look at what is out there. So we get you know, information from managers, directors, as well as the um, grant streams themselves when grants uh, come available. And then we coordinate with departments to see if we have any projects that are applicable to those grant streams. So we do have that in place currently. Um, and we can always look at making that process more uh, better. But um, currently, we do have a position that looks at those. Ms. Lagan. Your Worship, if I can add further, uh, just last week, we had a convening of all the major departments uh, because we were made aware of a uh, grant opportunity that the city hasn't taken advantage of in the last couple of years. And uh, we sat there, we put about a dozen um, ideas forward and using criteria on you know, what's the best project uh, to um, surface as one that would receive grant funding from that particular source. So it, we didn't want to compete with ourselves effectively. And so we are putting more and more structure around it. We have a resource not 100% dedicated, but now uh, an, a, an experienced resource, um, bringing the parties together and we're moving more strategically. Our idea is to leave no stone unturned and to maximize every opportunity. Thank you very much to both of you. Uh, it is for information. Um, Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you to all of staff, if I may. Um, I raised this issue uh, a number of weeks ago uh, about having a full-time grant person and seeing today's uh, reports, um, I can safely say that my, my fears were unfounded. So thank you very much. Now, Councillor Bonner, are you saying your fears are unfounded or your, your baby's been given birth? <laughs> 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 the uh, Leisure Economic Access Program LEAP Review. Mr. Harding, please. Thank you, Worship. Um, during our uh, GPC um, presentation to Council in December on the overall philosophies of fees and charges, we also included some background to Council on the LEAP Program. And then again last month when we introduced the uh, fees and charges for, for uh, review, we also talked again about the need for reviewing and updating the, the LEAP program. So this report, um, if approved, is looking at we've, we've adjusted the program over, over time and done a few tweaks. Our recommendation now is it's a time to do a complete review of the program. As you see in the report, there's a few, it's a few areas that we think need to be uh, a real solid review, particularly the de decrease in the use of the program by children, uh, looking at some other barriers, looking at some other best practices. So our two, two recommendations to Council for consideration is a approved review of the update of the LEAP program in 2020, so we'd like to do that this year. 
and refer the review of the program to the Advisory Committee on Accessibility and inclusive to develop, Inclusiveness to develop recommendations for changes for Council's consideration. And I would please answer any questions. Thank you very much. Councillor Gesselbrock. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. I um, yeah, definitely support the recommendation. And um, just to pass on, uh, like Councillor Armstrong and I met with uh, the Sawak uh, School and with, with youth there, and they they did they mentioned the LEAP program and just saying that some of the barriers were, like for example, having to bring a T4 slip from their parent to prove income, um, and that that was just really difficult. And so I think that's a great recommendation to bring it to the disability. Um, advisory uh, committee. I'm not saying that properly. The, names. the, accessibility. the diverse, the accessibility committee uh, the for review on, on those ideas. And I'm sure Councillor Armstrong will be making sure that that uh, point is taken yeah, as well. Thank you very much. Hmm? We do, Councillor Martin. I just oh, I forgot. I just had one question. Um, I know this will probably be referred to the accessibility committee. <coughs> But um, when we were looking at the low income cutoffs, these, like for an individual um, of gross monthly 835, those on disability are now at 1150. So did we not keep up with? This is, this is an old thing. I oh, this is an old old one? Bring it up. Oh, OK. This is an example of the original program. It was program. just an example. Yeah. OK, perfect. Thank you. We do have a delegation. Ms. McAllister, if you could come forward, please. And Your Worship, if I could just, though, on Councillor Hartman's um, comment there, though, those, were, those, those financial cutoffs and some of the changes that are happening in the federal transfers and, and child tax benefits, <laughs> those are things we need to also include in the review. Yeah. So there's a, there's a number of those, those newer things that have come up that need to be reviewed. McAllister, if you could state your name and address for the record, and welcome this morning. Thanks. Shauna McAllister, 409B, Canby Road. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, special council members. I'm here to provide a personal experience with the LEAP program. Uh, last year, I was working in a lumber yard, and I was making $13.85 maximum an hour for 28 to 32 hours a week, supporting my children who were with me half time. And in May, the children said, we can never go back to our father because he's going to kill us. So I'm like, oh my God. I got to go on disability during that time, medical disability, and support my children. So during that time, I went to the LEAP program to say, hey, we need some support services. I'm going to apply for your program. And it was looked at, and my income was too high to receive the LEAP card. But because I was on EI, I wasn't able to access the LEAP program. I wasn't able to afford, and the children in my full-time care from there onward, I wasn't able to afford the, ser the services. So that was okay for a while. We managed while accessing counseling services and everything for me and my children. So this year I thought, okay, I got my taxes done. I'm gonna be able to get the LEAP program. So um, I tried again and it seems as if my 1385 income an hour was still too much because it was deemed by the administrator of the LEAP program that um, with my child tax benefit, which is not considered by the CRA to be income, my child tax benefit bumped me up beyond what was accessible. So at that moment in time, which was just several weeks ago, my children were still experiencing avoidance and anxiety and getting them to school in the morning was an issue. So I decided we're just gonna go swimming every single morning and you guys are gonna be out of the house by 7.15, I'm dropping you off at your school and you're going to school regardless. So that worked. The kids were at school happy and energized for the day. And then all of a sudden, our LEAP program that was given, or our special passes that was given by the ministry to support us, were canceled by the LEAP program because, again, it was deemed that my income was too high. So all I'm saying is potentially, if the CRA is saying, child tax benefits, not income, then they should look at that and say, child tax benefits, not income. Don't have to include that on your LEAP program. So that's all I have to say. And it's a little bit of a moot point at this point to try to access city services because of what's going on. But in the future, when it's looked at, please consider that. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Alistair. Councillor Martman might mm -hmm. have a question for you. I just, I, I don't have a question, but I don't have a question. But I just want to say, as a single parent, myself and my children were younger, I hear you loud and clear. 
and hopefully this will be discussed at the Accessibility Committee. So thank you, thank you. for coming forward. Thank you. Any other questions for the delegation? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mr. McAllister. Councillor Armstrong. Councillor Armstrong. Second. Seconded. Councillor Martin. Seconded. Councillor Martin. Councillor Thorpe. Councillor Thank Thorpe. Your Worship. I, Thank uh, you, Mr. Worship. I uh, support the recommendation. Support the recommendation. And having been uh, and involved and uh, uh, involved uh, the for many years, many years, years over the many years, years over it is overdue. I think it is overdue. Um, but I guess um, I would just. But I guess I would just point out that to council uh, that. The bottom line is it can't, be, bottom line is it can't be all things to all people. It comes with a cost. It comes with a cost, and it will have budget implications. So, uh, just to Armstrong, as Councillor Armstrong would say, put that out there. <laughs> Dare I say the virus is spreading? <laughs> Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, the next is electrification and geo-exchange options for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Mr. Harding. Th thank you, Worship. Uh, again, off of uh, our GPC, recent GPC, which uh, Mr. Paminger came and did a presentation to you on our energy management program. This is one of the reports that we had mentioned that was going to be coming for you in studies. And um, Mr. Paminger is here to answer any questions on this. Uh, also, if you like, our, our recommendation to Council is direct staff to proceed with the studying and the feasibility and potential options of each facility for upgrades to the heating plants of the, the Nam Aquatic Centre, Bevan Park Recreation Centre, with the goal to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions and approve funding of $50,000 from the Emission Reduction Reserve Fund, bylaw 2019, number 7298, to complete these studies. Councillor Martman. Thank you. Through you, um, and I meant to ask this offside, but I'm here now. Just out of sheer curiosity, why do we need to pay for a study of the feasibility? Why does that cost so much, and why do we need to pay for that? So, Mr. Pemmerich can do the details on this, but this there is a few specialty uh, companies. It's up to fifty thousands, so it's really given us a chance to go over some of the uh, specific engineers, electrical engineers, energy engineers that we may need to, to look a little more deeply into some of our our uh, facilities. But Mr. Pemmerich can mention that. Okay. Yeah. If you have anything more to add to it. Um, basically, you've covered it. Uh, okay. Richard, uh, yeah, it's just to make sure that we. Uh, look at you know business as usual uh, versus what are all the uh, options and make sure especially since we're trying to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions uh, that we select or review the options and choose the best solution for those or for that objective okay thank you all roads may lead to Rome but we've got to pick the right one <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Hammonds thank you your worship um, just because it's coming from the Emissions Reduction Reserve Fund, I'd like to check in with the chairs of the Environmental Committee and see if this is something, an expenditure that they back. I know that that fund is looked at as a potential source of income going forward, not income, but, you know, something we can use going forward for that committee. So just be kind of curious for chair thoughts. Councillor Gesselbrock is next. Sorry. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to... Uh to uh, communicate with my, my co-chair, but uh, I, I personally uh, greatly appreciate the initiative uh, and, and taking this serious as a, as a potential area that we can reduce our, our greenhouse gas emissions. So um, I think that this is what uh, this reserve is meant for, to move through these initiatives. Um, you know, if, if we're not able to make the decisions within our own expertise and require uh, external expertise to, to really go through and, and see what the best options are, especially with such a large purchase, uh, I, I'm supportive. Um, and I've got a few questions, but I'll commentary to, uh, <laughs> to Councillor Brown, who may, may have a different opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Brown. Uh, thank you, Worship, and uh, thank you for putting that's on the spot, Councillor Hammonds. Uh, uh, I'm quite torn with this particular one, um, just as I, I didn't express it at the time, but I was also quite torn with the purchase of four EV vehicles from this particular fund. Um, uh, I think the city has been doing great work with respect to reducing its emissions, and there's always more than we can do. Um, 
but the particular area that I've expressed before of concern to me is the community-wide emissions, and um, I feel like these fun, you know, with the exception of the hundred thousand dollars for the uh, clean BC rebate program, the emphasis is sort of trending towards again on corporate functions, which is sort of contrary to what I would imagine uh, the focus being on. Um, so, like I said, I'm quite torn, and I, I I think it's a good initiative. We should do what we can to reduce our our corporate emissions, but. Uh, the big black bubble that has been presented to us numerous times um, is community-wide emissions. And every time that we chip away at this quite limited fund of money uh, uh, limits our ability to, I think, do more impactful actions on the community level. I think we just heard another putting it out there. Councillor Bonner. <laughs> Thank you, Worship. I was actually the same, had the same concerns that Councillor Martman had. Um, I. I'm wondering if at the end of this study, um, are we going to be looking at um, uh, natural gas as part of an, those options? Because I don't think that's the way to go. I think we should just be going electric. And if that is the ability to narrow the focus, um, to just go down that road, I'm choosing the road to get to Rome. Uh, I think it has to be electric. Um, so, and. I think a phone call to UVic, uh, no, sorry, uh, uh, up the university, who are also doing geothermal, might uh, solve that problem. I just, I think we have enough um, expertise on staff uh, to make these decisions. I just think we should just go electric and use the fifty thousand dollars to make up the plans. Personally, Councillor Armstrong. <laughs> This is one where I always wonder if we should not be going to the committees first so that it's heard from the committee and then the committee makes a recommendation because that's one of the reasons we strike these committees is to make these types of recommendations. So I always struggle when it hasn't gotten committee support. Just for the fact that we do have a lot of number of experts on that committee as well which may have some good ideas. So I really struggle with it. Thank you. Councillor Gessebrock. Yeah, I think... Uh, just a question of clarification to staff. Um, this uh, funding um, for for a uh, report on, on a feasibility study, it's, it's necessary to reach out to that level of expertise to look like, are we comparing whether if we just stay with natural gas and, and convert, uh, comparison between natural gas and converting to electric, or is it also like looking at all the different options and, and systems for uh, uh, electrical boilers um, and, 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 and the geothermal option as well, um, which you know is probably outside of, of our, our scope and expertise in, in staff. So, yeah, just an answer to that question. Um, we certainly would be looking at uh, you know the comparison bet between full electrification boilers to all the way back to the existing natural gas boilers. Uh, there are some uh, hybrid options in between that we'd like to look at as well. And also the geo exchange is part of the uh, review process as well. That's more of a um, uh, thing that would augment the heating plant. It wouldn't take over the entire heating <coughs> process. Uh, that's part of the request as well. So just building on that, Say if councils like uh, we don't want to entertain the idea of natural gas and would like electrification, would that preclude the necessity of this study? Um, sorry, just trying to understand that again. Say, say for example, if council made the decision that we uh, want to definitely invest in an electric boiler, uh, and would that preclude the necessity? Of and, and not go to replacement of a, of, a, of a natural gas boiler, would that preclude the necessity of this study? Um, the, sure. So, we're building off of what we're, we're, we've been here, gained direction from Council of looking at lowering our, our GHGs. We have to also come back to and show you what those costs are and what those may impact on service levels. Mm -hmm. So, we think there's a real opportunity to look at the electrification, but also as 
Mr. Pamager said there's some variations in there that we could use to keep the facilities as efficient as possible. And then it would also show you a bit of a scale, because if you did a hybrid, this is what it would be, and this is what the cost is here. But also, I think the interesting aspects that are to explore are the geothermal, geo-exchange options that, again, would have a longer payback period, but again, would, would, would give, show that we're trying to be innovative in how we're dealing with uh, managing our, and heating our facilities. Okay, thank you. Just one more. I think that uh, it's important to get moving on this and, and, and move it forward and, and not delay. Um, I think that it's important for Council to have that information, and so I'd, I'd like to move the recommendation. Is your seconder? No, second. Seconded. And Councillor Brown, you're next. Yeah, I just wanted to, I think, speak to the e you can't just swap out a piece of equipment and, and replace it. Uh, you know, you have to look at a lot of the existing infrastructure around it and the context which the equipment is in. So, uh, while I did express that I'm torn on this particular item, um, it's not so much the $50,000 because you just have to do your due diligence and you might find out that you, you can't actually do what you want to do. And it, it's the first step going down the path. So, um, I, I think it's... People always say, oh, why are we planning? Why are we doing studies? Well, it's actually to save you money in the long run without making foolish decisions. So um, I will support this, uh, but I just wanted to make my concerns noted that, again, we're focusing a lot corporately, and I think it's easy, that tr it's easy to do that because it's, it's easy rather than uh, some of the harder work that is the community-based reductions and figuring out how to achieve those. Councillor Hammonds. Thank you, Your Worship. I think I just had it answered, but just for my own clarity, my understanding is that between Two and four years from now, we're going to have a replacement on our hands, and we're going to do a study to see if we want to replace with the same equipment or better equipment or different equipment based on our strategic plan, our goals, et cetera. Correct? Correct. And a co or a combination of, <laughs> of, 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 uh, of solar, geothermal, all those types of things we can come back and show. Yeah. Okay. I'm in support. Thank you. Councillor Gesselbrock. Thank you. Uh, just again, I appreciate sta uh, staff's initiative on this and just speaking to uh, Councillor Brown's uh, concerns, you know, I, I feel the same way about uh, needing to focus on community emissions and I, I look forward to recommendations on the uh, community uh, energy um, op, you know, position that will be coming out. Thank you. Councillor Thorpe. Thank you, Your Worship. Very quickly, I'll support the recommendation as well. I understand, I think, the comments made by others around the table, and I share some of the concerns, but uh, myself, I want to uh, get expert advice before we decide what path we want to uh, follow down. So I, I will support this. Thank you. Thank you, and I can't resist weighing in a little bit this morning. Um, I can't recall the figure uh, for the replacement of the boiler at the Nanaimo Regional General Hospital, but we were talking about a multi-million dollar project, as I recall, uh, and I think it behooves us to, to get the expert advice. I, I'm very sympathetic to Councillor Bonner's position. Let's just move to electric, move there quickly. But um, at the same time, uh, we're talking uh, what will be a pretty complex project. We're not talking tens of thousands of dollars. We're talking into You'll hundreds, assist of thousands. hundreds of thousands of dollars and, and uh, I think we have a duty to ensure that we get the best advice and information possible and then we can make the tough decisions around this. Councillor Bonner. You just tweaked something and thank you, Your Worship. Um, will we be able to use this study uh, for all the facilities that we have um, other than just um, replacing this bowler? Like we'll be able to utilize the work that's done in it and look at all the other facilities and offer it to other organizations, uh, companies, that sort of thing. Can we do that if we're going to be doing this study anyway? Yeah, Your Worship to uh, Councillor Bonner. Yes, uh, the template of what we're trying to do here uh, actually um, transfers over to all our, all our facilities that use uh, natural gas currently, so we can use that template. Uh, we're actually looking at um, Oliver Woods as well currently, so um, that would certainly help support that decision. Thank you, Councillor Gesselbrock. I think this is number four. <laughs> Sorry, just uh, just one more comment uh, to uh, 
I just found it very interesting reading the report, the potential of being able to use uh, the city's mine shafts potentially for, uh, for geo exchange, and it would be a very fitting story. Uh, you know, the coal that gave heat to the community in the past now is still being able to provide it in a, in, in a green way uh, in the future. So uh, thank you for that creativity. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm going to uh, call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, the next is the Millstone Trunk Sewer Project Funding. And it was going to be Mr. Sims? No. Mr. Rudolph. This is busy at the moment at the dealing with other matters. I was wondering if there's any questions. Uh, Ms. Fuller is, is able to answer any technical questions with respect to this particular item. Councillor Armstrong. Move the recommendations. Seconded, Councillor Bonner. No discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion no carries. Stuff. Thank you very much. We have no bylaws. No notices of motion. Other business? There's correspondence from the Boat for Hope and Nanaimo Committee dated uh, February 27th, 2020. People have had a chance to look at that. I don't know that we have, uh, I, I wanted to make Council aware of the request. Ms. Gurry, I don't know that we, uh, it's been passed on to staff to see if there's some. Um, it has been passed on to staff, so an appropriate motion from you would just be to defer to staff to, to look into the options available. That would be an appropriate recommendation motion that you could make. Seconded. Councillor Bonner. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you very much. I'm going to assume we have no questions. No. A motion for adjournment. Moved Councillor Bonner, seconded Councillor Brown. All those in favor, motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone.